rumor has it that tardigrades have DNA from unknown sources. Can that even be possible? Hey everyone, I'm here with Dr. Meg Lauman from the California Academy of Sciences here in San Francisco. And we're going to take a deeper look at the mysterious tiny world of tardigrades. Welcome, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you, what fun to be here and talk about my favorite subject. Yes, all right, let's get right into it. So first of all, do you have a favorite pet name for tardigrades? Do you like water bears or moss piglets? Oh, I love water bear because it's so cute, but that means slow walker, technically, tardigrade. And moss piglet is kind of a fun name, isn't it, when yes. you need to get someone's attention. I brought one to share with you. Yes, definitely looks like a little like lifelike, but kind of large, and they're not really blue, but they are no. cool, aren't they? What do they actually look like? You can't see them with the oh, human eye, right? Correct. I think about 20 could fit on my little finger. Technically, a few are large enough that you could see if you had a hand lens, um, but usually it requires a microscope to see them. And that's what's so cool. We hardly know anything about them. What are some of the most interesting facts about them? They are number one extremophile. In fact, right. that means they can live in extreme places. They can live in really cold climates. They can live in hot springs. They can go in outer space. They sent some on one of the NASA flights and they even had babies up in space. So wow. they're just totally able to go in a little ball sometimes, mm -hmm. which is called cryptobiosis, and then stay in that stage for even over a hundred years. We've been able to find them in dried plant collections that are over a hundred years old by putting a drop of water on them and having them come back to life. So if I were to look at one of these little guys underneath a microscope, what would I see? Right, so if you looked under a microscope, you would say, oh, it's so cute, I'm sure you would, but they do have four pairs of legs. They have what appears to be a face, but obviously it's not the same sense as we have. They don't totally see, but they do have the rudiments of most systems, digestion and circulation, et cetera, et cetera. They have sections. Um, some are really flat. Some are very, very puffy. Um, so they have a lot of variation in their shape and even in their size. Uh, but they're kind of situated between nematodes and arthropods. And so people don't know quite what to do with them. They're right. just so unique that way. Can you tell us a little bit about their mysterious foreign DNA? Right, so this new discovery by a team at uh, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill has found that they have up to 18% foreign DNA. And in this case, scientists are speculating that because tardigrades are such extremophiles, they are in a condition sometimes where the membranes have uh, breakage, the DNA is splitting, there are all these different wild and wonderful possibilities of how foreign DNA could get into them more than, say, other organisms. Yeah, I've seen a couple of the headlines use the word alien DNA, but it's not really alien DNA. I know, right? I think that was to get your attention. Yes. I definitely clicked on those links. <laughs> right, and I did check on that too, and the foreign means it's not water bear DNA, it's right. probably algae that they live mm -hmm. with, or it could be fungi that's in the droplets of water that they're kind of floating in and in the neighborhood of their environment, but certainly not their own DNA, which is kind of cool. So let's get back to the idea of tardigrades in space. Did, were they attached to the satellite intentionally or were they just hitching a ride? Uh, they did. They were attached intentionally. There have been some really cool experiments, some of which were fostered by school kids wondering about that question because tardigrades are so extremophile, could they survive in outer space? And technically they are the only creature that has been known to go into outer space, come back, and have all of the same qualities and characteristics of life that one would hope. So technically that's a very cool thing to think about. Could they have come from somewhere else? Could they be going to another planet? You know, that mm -hmm. really brings to mind a lot of creative thinking about extraterrestrial life. Thanks so much, Dr. Lauman, for joining us today. And where can our viewers find you? So I work at the California Academy of Sciences. You can always find me there. Just ask for the tree climbing lady. Uh, I do have a website, www.canopymeg.com and a Twitter handle, which is Canopy Meg. So I always have a lot of water bear information popping up on those sites, um, but I would love to have young visitors come over to the Academy and meet some of my fellow scientists. 
I also love octopuses. Check out this video where Trace learns how these creatures change color right here. Most of their skin uh, can change shape, texture, and color. So they have muscles in their skin that will push out these little flaps of skin uh, in, so they can look spiky or like they can look or like, like a rock or like algae. So what do you think? Are tardigrades cute or hideous? You better think they're cute. Sound off down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to DNews so you don't miss a single episode.